Okay, guys, so let's begin with this master duel video <laughs> because it's gonna be first replays, then the deck list. So, the first re replay that I want to watch is uh, this one. Well, first, let's, ch let's check our hand. I think it's nice, right? Like, I think we have everything we need, but of course, it depends on what they are trying to do because we only have one ash as a defensive and maybe give it as a board breaker. The second we see Aldebar, we know branded. Let, it, let him do everything and Ash branded fusion. Simple. So we don't take any bait. Not the opening, not the Quen mill, not the other guy mill. Branded fusion. That's where you Ash. Simple. Now uh, eventually they're gonna have to pass. They don't do too much. I think they mostly are gonna rely on non agent in this case. Uh, and now, PDT. So what are we losing to? Hmm. Probably a lot of hand drops. But there's no way unless they have Max. What are we doing against Naxi? So we usually have two choices. Or trying to serve on a really small board, so of course not OTK. Or OTK um, navigating through hand traps that they could have and also doing the least amount of special sounds. So pay attention to this. Dolphin, they draw. Um, now we search. Now the thing here is, we have a lot of things to interact with hand wraps. We have Dolphin, we have TDT that could rip, and we have Gearfit. So what should we do? Well, we could have Dolphin before doing this summon, but we have to summon Gearfit, so if they have any Viru, we can rip it right now. And yeah, <coughs> guess what? They don't have any hand drop. It's, I mean, we see Super Poly, so we, they probably have only board breakers, but who knows? We, we have to be smart about this. So, we do one summon that is gonna trade, even if they draw a hand trap, that allows us to, give, to have gear fit negate, so it's a good trade. So now, we TTT take. That's really smart, that's uh, something that you have to an analyze, because the Quen could have an effect to revive. Um, they could have revived Falling of Albas, maybe. So it's right here. Um, wait, where is Quen? Yes, here. If a card leaves the extra deck, that's why we did everything before committing the extra deck summons. So we took Quem, that way he cannot um, use this to revive Falling, Falling of Albas and use him as an interruption. Uh, in this case, we just go straight into Unicorn. Why is all if there is no need? We have enough material to make access code. And that was Renaud, Unicorn, access code, three summons. So they didn't have hand traps, and now they got three unknown cards. But what do we have? We have Gifted, which means even if they have Nibiru, we can negate it. So in those three cards, he should have drawn like Veiler Need. That's like the only combination of hand drops. That's a really small chance of happening. So we took an educated um, risk because we did the least amount of special summons and we navigated by doing, um, you know, no hand drops. Okay, you draw three cards, but we have one negate. So it is likely that we still OTK. Simple. Yeah, at that point, at that point we won. Okay, next replay. Now we are going first, I believe. What do you see? This hand, man. These hands. Oh boy. Brick. What's the only thing that could happen? That they hand trapped and we did draw into some, you know? Maxi. Of course, this may look like a bad moment for Maxi, but I mean, uh, he's so infernoble, he probably are aware that red layer exists. And he's like, hey, what if you have red layer? Let's max it now. I think it's fair. So at this point, we decide to, I mean, if you could have think of TTT, mm, look at the hand, but then he would have four cards with the draw. And with four cards, he could, any day can probably OTK. So we have to risk into draw two. But what can you draw to out max C? He already resolved. We do exactly what we needed. A normal summon. So now Durendal can get us a level 4. Okay. Now that normal summon can get us the Ogre right now. So okay, Max, you draw 1. Fine. Now we activate Joy. Because our plan is to revive Turbine. We could have revived with Living Fossil, but I think Turbine has a greater effect that revives itself, so we might as well just mm. utilize something else to keep the Fossil as an extender. So now Joy can revive. I mean, not revive, but get follow up and that way joy is not wasted now the third special summon baguska baby that's how we beat maxi because there is no sp in this format 
yet. So just with three special summons, okay, draw three. If you, did, you, you didn't got your infram, Naguska, maybe GG. And we have a lot of follow-up for the next turn because how we sequence that, we conserve the living fossil, we joy add back the flint, and he's on a snake eye without the speed, so he cannot out Baguska. He don't have enough gas, it looks like. No, I think this is super simple. All we gotta do is hold decay, but how? We, of course, try to set up a Gilfit, just in case. And the way of doing that is using summon, kill Gilfit, and get it back with the equips. Yeah, he drawled here, which may be huge, but we have TTT. Uh, of course, we are gonna utilize the TTT to look at the hand now. He had a second hand drop, and he's on a weird build, but yeah, he apparently didn't have enough to beat Pagoska. So now there is no hand drops, all we gotta do is sequence OTK under the roll. That's simple. We still wanna have the gear fit, and um, in this case, we don't even have to make the access code, like, we don't even need that. Because our game plan is gonna be revive with the graveyard effects. Revive all year, revive gear fit by adding a special summoning, and uh, that's the game right there. You just need to take out uh, your calculator and calculate game. Simple. Okay, boys, third game. Uh, not a match, just three separate games because Master Duel. So in this case, we have, um, let's see. Oh, yeah, we have a lot of gas and an infirm. We are going first. Let's see if he has something to stop us. Looks like he don't. Huh? Well, let's see the hand. Oh boy, mirror match. And looks like we are already one. I mean, he has three board breakers, called by, called by uh, TDD, because we can call by stuff like Roland, Princess, non-engine. But, um, if you are good in front of a player, you are destroying this guy right now. So, Poor fellow, he has no choice. If you are looking this video, Gentlewood, thanks for getting me this replay. Because what are we gonna showcase here? Fast forward, fast forward and full combo. Full combo, super, super um, aggressive combo. Now, if you didn't check it before, yeah. <coughs> we don't have bamboo sword, we're gonna talk about that more in the deck list, but you're, you're about to see the full, full end world without needing the bamboo sword. Um, okay, I think this is gonna be super, Simple, just if you want to understand what's going on, just pause and rewind at any point or, or ask me in the, in the comments. I just want to fast forward, I don't think I have too much to explain. We realize the leaf fossil there, so the turpin is live to the summon. We get the mogis because we want to draw into something else. Uh, uh, I think we want um, yeah, to resolve the museum intent. And now uh, we upgrade, we realize turpin. Yeah. Now, yeah, we use the other museum. Now we're gonna, we have to make princes at some point, so we're gonna do it like soon, I promise. Now we keep getting materials. I think this is the moment for the princess. We dissolve every time. And our prince is gonna get us another level four. Now we pop the princess, so she is not locking us. And what are we doing with two level fours? Baguska, just because we can. We could have done Anapulusa right there. Instead of Bag Baguska and Princess, could have been Anapulusa three materials. I just decided to make it like uh, with Baguska just to showcase the, the possibilities of this deck. So this is right now, like one, two, three, four, five, six, um, Princess, seven, oh, wait, wait. So these guys are like four on board, five with this, six with the pop, seven with the Roland pop, yeah, at least seven interruptions, plus the Ash in hand, plus the Imperm set, nine interruptions, plus the Dolphin rip ten, and it could have been 11, 11 if you wanted the three material of Lusa instead of the Pop and Baguska. Yeah, I mean, insane, 11 interruptions. Well, who needs that? that? That's just too much, that's disgusting, honestly. Yeah. Oh, this is just a cool experiment in Master Duel. Coldplay is not making the Link 1 effect, lose his uh, lose the link one effect when they call by the synchro yeah just so you know that and here we just waste interruptions because we just wanted to to show him hey i had all of this so it doesn't matter what what was your tactic just so you know 
and yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, the replay just ended here. I mean, we don't over commit, we just hold decay right there. Okay, we're back. This is the fourth replay. So in this hand, uh, we get the connector. That's what you should do, always do, the wanker combo. We get maxi, and again, no out to maxi. So what should we do? You know we have a goose as a plan B, but that's not the only plan B. You have to be smart and check every scenario. So here, we uh, we have Dolphin to look at the hand, but we also have TT. At this point, I don't need to TTT draw 2 because if I want Baguska, I already have access with this hand. I mean, Connector is already a level 4, Durandal could have been Flint, Oliver, Baguska, or if you don't want to make the extra summon, just pre Cardero, summon Oliver, Baguska. Um, so you don't need to draw 2. I'd rather look at the hand, see if I have to Dolphin grip something useful, see if my Angel Ring is useful, and then take a better decision. Yeah, because Dolphin. Uh, if it's not useful, I'd rather look at the hand with TDT than Dolphin. Yeah, so I don't minus one. We look at this hand, and I don't know this matchup, so I had to read all, all of those cards, except the Poly, of course. I came to the conclusion that this, his Wincon, of course, is going into the battlefield with crazy fusion monsters, and he has one weak monster that I could, I could Dolphin rip. He doesn't have a accessible, a light graveyard effect, the graveyard effect to be live, he needs Toy Mentor, which from what I can see, he doesn't have access if we shuffle back the chain. The chain is the most scary card because this is like a plus one when it touches the graveyard, so we have to TDT shuffle that. Um, yeah, and then we can Dolphin rip the other one, and then he only has one guy which is doing nothing on its own. And he needs to double like another guy so he can even use the polymerization. Yeah, but at that point, we have Angel Ring for the poly. And the other one only uses field and graveyard. So I don't know. I thought it was a, a good idea to just not commit that much into the Baguska. So in this case, we only go for um yeah, we activate we activate render so we can equip Angel Ring. And now we search Wanker Combo. So Dolphin can discard the Oliver. And in the turn three, we have a Wanker Combo, a good starter. Yeah. Uh yeah, we rip the other one and we pass. That's it. We didn't commit. So he starts his turn with four cards after he maxi, that's funny, that's really funny. Yeah, he op only opened a, another guy that is not useful, um, yeah, he doesn't do too much. So in our turn, we have everything, I and mean, we know the two cards in hand are spells, so we have a clear path into the OTK. Of course, we are warrior locked, so no access code. How are you making the OTK? What's the, what's the easiest way to do it when the opponent has two monsters? Gear free. So this is just <coughs> sequencing to get oh yeah Angelica in this nice way with Lean Fossil because I think we didn't have enough equips to mill for. Uh, but you need to be creative to access Angelica, that's honestly what you have to do. In this case we sacrificed the Durendal because I mean oh but if you had bamboo sword you didn't need to sacrifice Durendal. Yeah but you don't need it. I mean look at the replay. We are still winning this one. Yeah. So now you get your link one and your kid fit, and that should be game. Just in case I equip the single Roland, but I think this is like exact game, thanks to the Dolphin 500 damage. So yeah, uh, gear fit making 24 damage. Oh sorry, 20, 29. Then 4K and then it's all for 16. GG's. Okay, and the last the last replay right now is this one where we get Ash on the connector <coughs> and we have TDT so you could try to draw two but there is no need, we have combo so when you have combo you always TDT look at the hand in this case we take the second hand draft and he has three nice board breakers engine cards but it, it won't matter at the end of the day so here only with connector and Durendal I mean let's say that is is sold with Durendal used and without bamboo sword what can the deck do? And it can still do 5 interruptions, which I think is good enough considering the longest draw later on, I mean the opponent's turn, and the maxi infinity draws if he wants to break the board. So as you can see, we do the basic sequence. This is like an example of the basic combo. And, and it's super basic because we don't even utilize Durendal of the museum because Durendal was used earlier. In this case, 
we realize we realize it as mains, but we don't have anything to recover. So this is the sequence. You go into the synchro. You use Almaze to equip something to the synchro. That's why you don't need bamboo sword here, because you still have access to your uh, the equipment that you need for the double link one. Now you use the Roland, and yeah, that's five interruptions. Those are two link ones, the two graveyard effects, two pops, and the angel ring. Plus Maxi and a lot of follow up, like the connector is still a one card combo here. So we just shotgun Maxi because why not? The super ball is gonna be negated, and I know he could fall in with Alba's try to break the board, but that's not gonna be enough. Even if he puts a mirror jade on board, it's not enough for all the follow up we have. So now into the deckness. Okay, this is the deckness. I know we have to talk about the controversial part of the deckness. So, first of all, um, the single spoil. Great engine, don't get me wrong. I like it a lot, I use it on TCG. Here, I just make a meta call that I don't need it because the main problems of the deck, I mean, in this Master Duel format, is Maxi, and for this deck, a Rise Hub. And, I mean, our Shifter. And, and yeah, Simple doesn't actually address those problems, doesn't solve them. I know it's a great extender, but I'd rather focus on those problems. That's why. Um, usually, I would have like the deck list that Pack show, for example, for me is great with the Sinful. I like that take on 42 cards. I would probably see cut it to 40 and just play the 1 TT, but that would be my take. If you want to include the Sinful, you would remove 2 TTs and the Imperms. Why do I choose to keep them? Because against Maxi, and at least the Imperm is going to be like a non engine interruption that you could hard open. Um, because again, the Sinful doesn't actually help you make the Baguska, not, not, even, not even there. Uh, and the TTD could be useful, useful for drawing to get in the Baguska or into ripping something in the opponent's engine if you already open an engine. And to counter a rise card, well, that's self explanatory. And I like to keep the deck at 40 because of, again, the format. In the format, here we have four one card combos, the connector. And Droll is in the format, Ash is in the format, we want to beat those with the connector. And Max is in the format, and we only have six maxi outs. And of course, we want to draw those six as often as possible. That's why I, I, I really like sticking to 40. Just 40. And also, um, what's, what was the other issue? Um, I mean, yeah, so I can draw my own maxi as often as possible. So in this example, I think 9 hand drops is like accept acceptable. If, I, if it's a mirror match, I may be able to stop them with those 9 hand drops. So yeah, I like it like this. I don't think we need the simple because, oh, how are you beating Nibiru? I mean, we still have Kirfit, you know? Uh, consistently and with the connector and it's all we can you can also make the Apulusa and if you get Nib on before the Apulusa you can always like all you need is like is salt Renault and at that point you will have a Turpin in graveyard a Durendal in hand so you could have some, do something like equip Durendal into the token revive Turpin get Renault uh, or Oliver sorry some the Oliver and yeah that's still combo but what's your cost if you don't have bamboo bamboo is the other controversial topic <laughs> It's a nice engine, it's free real estate. So if you wanna play, go ahead. For me, the problem is that I am playing 40, I don't wanna go over 40. That blue engine means 23% chance of opening. I think it's almost 24. So it's almost really close to one every four duels. One every four duels, you're gonna open one of those bricks. Opening the brick doesn't mean that you, that you lose, but it, um, of course, um, affects uh, your game. Like you have more chances to lose, especially going second. And I don't think I need it. I think because of my experience in TCG, without the sold, without Phoenix Blade for a lot of months already. Well, maybe not too much months, but a lot of weeks, a lot of duels. I uh, I can manage resources super well you know, to the point that I can calculate what I need, so I don't um, misplay. So if you misplay, of course you need the, the bamboo sword as a plan B. Uh, but if you use all the resources correctly, trust me, I, I, I start testing uh, Master Duel with the new support of Infernoble. It's the lowest rank, I think it was Rookie 4, Rookie 2, I don't remember. But from the lowest point until Diamond 5, um, Platinum Diamond, yeah, Diamond 5, I never lost a game because I was lacking the bamboo. But in my experience, if you use all your resources optimally, you can cut the bamboos. But if you cannot, then those are like your training wheels. That's the way I see it. Um, yeah, and because going first, you would be like, oh, but going first with bamboo, you can put one more interruption with one card combo, like seven interruptions. And maybe I do five or six. I mean, if you use your interruptions optimally, 
Again, you don't need to put seven, eight. You could put four with the one ash or one imprint that you open and still win going first. And that's all you try to do, win. But trust me, with this list, I am winning going second most, more often than probably other lists where you don't, or you're playing the bamboos and you draw them going second, or where you like, you draw your sinful cards, and, but then you have an arise card or, or a shifter and then they are dead, and stuff like that, you know? Um, so yeah, that's my take on the deck. That's how I like it for Master Good. Uh, what other topic? Arturigus. You can play Arturigus without the bamboos. Arturigus comes up less often. You need to open like a soul and a graveyard effect like one of the level fours in Fernobles. So you can revive your Turpin. Like, um, but it doesn't come up too much for me. And again, I think it's kind of contradictory to the saving the graveyard resource because we don't have the bamboos. So again, I haven't missed the Arturigus at all. I think the extra deck is really close to perfection for my take on the deck. The one thing that I was thinking about was cutting the Ferocious because Ferocious is nice with Sinful, so you have more result access. But without Sinful, I thought about cutting Ferocious, but it still comes up. When you're Warrior Lock, you need to get, get rid of the Princess. Making that guy helps. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I mean, also because of the TTT, I could take something and then normal summon a hand drop and still have Ferocious. Or I have the combo of the Ash or Maxi and New Sim Durenda. Yeah. Where I can like search the Oliver, search another equip so I can cause the equip summon Oliver. Oliver and hand drop into Ferocious. Equip Oliver, New Sim summon it, is all. Yeah, that's the way. Um, what else? What do I think about the deck? Um, I think, I think that's everything I needed to explain to you. I, any question, please let me know in the comments. The Unicorn Access Code. Um, yeah, they're flex spots. I like them a lot, especially when you are playing against um, the time, against the clock, and you need to OTK fast. Yeah, Access Code could, could help doing that. Also against Kashira, if they like Unicorn rip your Charles or whatever, you don't have to play duplicates. Just go for a different line, a different route. You can still like Access Code gear with OTK. Um, what else? What else? Ida, I think it's self-explanatory. The synchros are self-explanatory. Uh, Double Lingua, Baguska, I already show you why. You could feed a Zeus, so Baguska can attack a defense position a right heart, but that's hard to pull off. Like they could vanish face some a level 4 before you summon the Baguska. So I think that's it. Yeah. I don't remember what else. I was supposed to tell you about the deck so i hope you enjoyed this discussion and this showcase about what can the deck do this is how i am playing it and i think i have a lot of accurate um, takes on the deck and a lot of reasons why yeah and also a lot of examples the five that i showed you here are like just some of those not not all the biggest that i could share knowledge um, with you you know i also give coaching sessions and yeah i also give them for master role in case you didn't know because I also consider that I can bring for novel uh, at its peak, at its best, yeah, in this format. So I hope you like this. I think that's everything. Um, yeah, max it out. The not playing bamboos, playing living fossil also helps when you like see a lava golem early. Like you can later, um, when not get the living fossil later on, summon the connector into the dolphins when you have a the 3,000, 4,000 attack monster and rip whatever you want. I like that flexibility. Mm, yeah, that's that's all, man. That's all. Have a good day.